Now, the finance minister, Ken Ufriata, will on Friday, November 18, 2022, appear before the eight-member bipartisan ad hoc committee investigating the votes of Senja Moshing against him. The move follows a request by counsel for the embattled minister, Gabi Asayachiridako, who prayed the chair to grant his client 48 hours for him to examine the documents tendered in evidence for his response. Now, the testimony of Ken Ufriata follows a six-hour engagement with lead proponents for the vote of Senja, who have argued that the minister is simply not in position to hold onto his job. You have cement, which used to buy at 18 uh, Ghana cities, now 95. You see, the incompetence is said that a contractor today who is not being paid by the minister is enduring additional costs in respect of procuring cement and iron rods. What will they do? So that cost will also come at a cost to government. And we even fear that many projects may be uncompleted because at the time that you awarded the contracts, you use the market value of these essential commodities like cement, like uh, uh, let me refer to um, Iron Road, which was around 180 Ghana cities, now 780, and now um, uh, petrol, which was at uh, 14 cities, now 80 Ghana cities, diesel, which was 14, almost around 100, and even uh, we decide. So there is a cost of living crisis in Ghana, exacerbated by an uncontrolled inflation. And we think that the Honorable Minister for Finance must be held responsible for that. Exogenous factors, yes. That's why I asked the rhetoric question that did you borrow to support the war in Ukraine? Because much of our problem is that you have borrowed excessively, making Ghana a debt distressed country, unsustainable debt. And uh, Chairman, again, in evidence, I'm sure somebody misled even the president when the president categorically said that there will be no haircut. Why president appoint ministers is that you give him good advice. I'm not sure the president was advised properly to have been categorical that there will be no haircut. So, Chairman, today what Ghana needs most is what we call confidence. The markets want confidence. Businessmen want confidence. In fact, the international community want confidence. The key point here has to do with confidence. I think the time has come for our minister to step aside to give the country a new breath. It doesn't mean he has not contributed his quota towards the support, uh, the running of the country. He has. But the time has come for him to give the country an opportunity to recover. Him leaving, and I want to plea, plea to him that even the watch seller on the street want him to go. His own party people want him to go. They may not be able to say it, but they want him to go. So please, when you are confronted in a situation like that, that everybody thinks that you have to go, we in the minority, we in the minority, we in the minority, have no choice than to say that the time has come and we've laid our grounds. The grounds are technical, they are grounded, in evidence, we have shown our evidence. Yes, when Honorable Ejapamesa raised the issue as to whether IMF uh, had sanctioned him. But let me say, the misreporting he did was not to IMF. The misreporting was to Parliament of Ghana. We require at least 48 hours. What's your reckoning of the 48 hours? 48 hours should mean that um, we are looking at Friday.